right guys, it's Tamara coming back at you with another video. Let's go ahead and jump in. We're gonna conclude our conversation about divorce. Um, it's something that, that I've been talking a lot about with my clients, primarily my clients who have young children. Um, I lead a group for women and men who are dealing with the final stages of their divorce. And one of the questions that comes up is, how do we cope with this divorce and how do we help our kids cope? It's something I cannot escape. So I figured I would talk about it today. I'm actually gonna list over here for you um, some of the tips as I go through them so that you can kind of keep on track with me because there's a few things I wanna really, really highlight. The benefit for you in this video today is just to learn about some of the things that you can look into research and learn to do um, as you go through the final stages of your divorce. And I encourage you to share this video with someone who may benefit. Okay, and also I encourage you to give a thumbs up to this video. What it does is it pushes the video up in the search for results of YouTube. And so then that way other people can gain access to this video. I encourage you to do that if you found this video helpful. You can also subscribe so that the next time I post a video, which is Mondays and Fridays, you will get an immediate alert. So I encourage you guys to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in and get started. The first thing that I want you guys to think about in terms of coping with a divorce is therapy. If you find a really good therapist who knows what they're doing, um, they're very um, open-minded and they're well-rounded with this topic, you're gonna do well. You want a therapist who can be objective and also very emotionally uh, supportive and compassionate all at the same time. You don't want a therapist who's opinionated, um, who has not healed from their own divorce, um, who sees things from a one-sided perspective, right? You want a therapist who's well-rounded, who knows what they're talking about, but who also knows how to be objective, compassionate, subjective, right? You want somebody that's a little opinionated, but you want them to really base their observations of you and your case on objectivity and facts, okay? So that's the first thing, therapy, all right? So I'm gonna put that over here for you as a reminder. The next thing is mediation. Mediation basically includes somebody who's experienced with going in between two individuals who are arguing over property, money, children, custody, you know, all that stuff. So you want a mediator who is either a psychotherapist, somebody who can help you emotionally and psychologically make decisions with your ex, right? Come to an agreement on, you know, how is one person going to take the kids this day and take the kids that way? Or a lawyer, right? A lawyer or an attorney is somebody who can help you deal with the legal aspects of that mediation. There's a couple of things I want you to keep in mind when it comes to mediation, okay? One is values. So you want to know, does this mediator hold the same values or at least similar values to me? Because if not, you're gonna be unhappy with the decision-making process and you're not gonna be comfortable with it at all, okay? So values. The other is objective, right? Objectivity, I should say. Is this mediator objective or are are they, you know, um, subjective and opinionated and just judgmental and all of that, right? You want a mediator who's going to give you the facts. You want a mediator who's going to be able, like I said earlier, to be compassionate, but also be able to, you know, stand on the facts and figure out what really needs to be done. Okay. The last thing I want you to consider when you're thinking about mediation is does this mediator see what I need in, in the way that I can help my family, right? So best interest of the child is what I'm talking about, right? What's in the best interest of my children? You know, is this mediator understanding the full scope of the situation? Um, not just that the mediator disagrees, okay? Because if the mediator disagrees with you on something, you know, they may see it a little bit differently and you kind of have to go along with that um, or don't do the mediation at all. But what I mean by what I just said, excuse me, in terms of, you know, you know, is this person understanding the best uh, decision for my children? What I mean by that is you want to make sure that the mediator understands the situation in its entirety, right? You don't want a mediator who feels like, well, you know, the children should still go over your husband's house if he's smoking drugs in the house, right? The children should still have their dad in their life, even though he's having an affair with two married women, right? You don't want a mediator who isn't considering the impact of decisions and behaviors on the child okay so you want a, a a mediator who takes into account your values they they need to be objective but also compassionate and then they also need to keep in the forefront of their mind the best interest of the child okay whether you disagree or not doesn't necessarily matter what matters is that there's somebody in the middle who is trying to focus on what's best for everybody but most likely um, and most importantly what's best for that child 
okay? The next thing, which will be the third tip that I give you is spiritual guidance. I think spiritual guidance is important to keep in the forefront of your mind when you're going through a divorce or when you're finalizing it or even after it, right? You want somebody like a pastor, a coach, somebody that can help you make sense out of your emotions and your thoughts and somebody that can kind of help you rework your life. Sometimes therapists aren't good with that. They go to a book or they get a worksheet and they're like, here, complete this, let's do this together, right? You don't really need that sometimes. Sometimes you just need somebody as casual as a, a, you know, a wise grandmother or a coach or, you know, a bishop, a pastor to just sit you down and say, okay, here's what we need to do. Okay. I'm of the firm belief that, you know, we operate off of our intellects. We operate off of our, our survival skills uh, during everyday life, but then we also need to refuel. And sometimes that refueling involves spiritual guidance, right? It's something that therapy just can't offer. So you want to keep that in mind. The fourth thing is coping skills, right? You want to be able to have the skills you need to cope with everything. I'm going to actually post in the description box below a link to my article, 38 ways to cope with stress or 38 ways to relax. I think it is. You want to be able to look down that list and choose a couple of things you can do each week to keep yourself balanced, to keep yourself um, from going over the edge. This is extraordinarily important during a divorce. You don't want to be so overwhelmed that you can't focus. You can't think, you know, you can't make the right decisions and you, you cannot be there for your kids. You don't want that to happen. So relaxing and finding proper cooking skills is key. Okay. Last but not least is structure. You want to be able to have structure in this situation, you know, regardless of how you feel about everything, structure is important, especially for kids. You want to keep things um, routine and organized and, and um, open and sensible and, you know, things that just make sense for your kids and for you. You don't want to feel like, oh my God, I'm everywhere. Who's who, what's what, right? You want to have everything um focused and structured and routine oriented these are all important tips and i think a lot of parents and families struggle with these um actually my list of tips here came from my group that i had the other day and my group was basically how do you cope with divorce and how do you help your kids cope with it so um i really do hope that these things are going to be helpful for you all right, guys, thanks so much for being with me today. I encourage you to comment in the comment section below if you have questions about this or if you have tips or um, suggestions on how to cope with divorce. I encourage you to post your comments in the comments comments box below. Oh, that's all I have to say. Um, also too, I encourage you to go to my website, anchorandknowledge.com. If you'd like to text me or email me, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page. You'll see audio message. You can leave me a voicemail there. You can also go to my website and email me and find my Twitter account at Therapist T. All of this information is going to be at the end of the video, but in the meantime, guys, I wish you well. Next week, we're going to start with some new things, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Bye. Sometimes the best way for kids to cope with a divorce is to just get them out of the situation. And getting them out of the situation may be as simple as letting them stay with grandma sometimes. It might even be, you know, letting them um, have friends over to sleep on the weekend. Um, just getting them out of that mindset of my world's falling apart, my parents are falling apart, right? Not only is it good for the, the kids to get away, but it's also good for the parents to get away as well. So vacations and distractions and um, engaging in healthy behaviors such as eating good and exercising and spending family time together, not with that other partner, of course, or that ex, but the children, right? So spending time with your son or your daughter, um, taking them out to eat, you know, doing things that's going to recharge your mind. Sometimes getting through a divorce includes starting completely from scratch, starting over, being able to figure out, um, you know, life again. You know, what is my life going to be like without this person? And am I providing some stability for my child? And if I am, um, do we need a therapist to kind of help us keep that stability happening. Um, so I think those are things that we need to, we need to be thinking about.